Hello kids, it's Mr. AG here, and for our Wednesday, December 9th Read Aloud, I'm going to read to you the book I Love Guinea Pigs by Dick King Smith, and it's illustrated by Anita Duram, and it's published by Candlewick Press. I Love Guinea Pigs. Here's the back of the book. Um, it's part of a Read and Wonder book series. It, they tell you stories, take you on adventures, and show you how big and wonderful the natural world is. Open one up and be amazed. I Love Guinea Pigs by Dick King Smith and illustrated by Anita Dram. What's not to love about a guinea pig? They're sensible, hardy, happy animals. And they're chubby, chubby, and cuddly. Dick King Smith provides a simple and affectionate guide to these charming small creatures that will have you falling in love with them too. I love guinea pigs. There's a silly old saying that if you hold a guinea pig up by its tail, its eyes will drop out. Well, of course they wouldn't, even if you could, which you couldn't, because guinea pigs don't have tails. And they aren't pigs either. They're rodents, like mice and rats and squirrels. What do guinea pigs have in common with pigs? The males and females are known as boars and sows. Rodents have special front teeth that are great for gnawing things. These teeth go on growing throughout the animal's life and are self-sharpening. As for the other part of their name, guinea pigs were first brought to Europe about 400 years ago by Spanish sailors, probably from a country in South America called Dutch Guyana, and the sailors called them Guyana pigs. In fact, the guinea pig is a member of the Cavey family, and its Latin name is Cavia porcellus, which means a piggy-looking cavy. Anyway, whatever they're called, it's the way they look that I've always liked. They're so chunky and chubby and cuddly, with their blunt heads and sturdy bodies and short legs. They come in tons of different colors, and they can be smooth-coated or rough-coated or long-coated, not to mention the other varieties. I've had hundreds of guinea pigs over the last 50 years, but I've always liked the Abyssinians best. Here's the smooth hair. Here's Peruvian, crested, a Sheltie, and here are the Abyssinians. Guinea pigs are such sensible animals. They're awfully easy to keep because they aren't fussy. They don't like the cold, of course, or the damp, any more than you would. And they're not happy living in a pokey little space any more than you would be. But as long as they have a comfortable, warm, dry place to live, guinea pigs are as happy as can be. Guinea pigs like a really big roomy hutch, or better still, a wire pen out on the grass. They're hardy animals and don't often get sick. Properly cared for, they can live a long time. Most guinea pigs live for about five to eight years. I once had a crested sow named Zen. She lived two years with me and then eight more with one of my daughters. People's hair grows whiter as they age, but Zen's grew darker. Guinea pigs need plenty of food. They love eating, just like you do and feeding them is half the fun of having them. Some people, of course, feed them nothing but hay and pellets from the pet store, and they're just fine. But how boring a diet like that must be, both for the piggy-looking cavy and its owner. I always used to give my guinea pigs lots of other kinds of food as well, cabbage and cauliflower leaves, carrots, pieces of bread and apple peelings, and wild plants like dandelions and clover. I gave them water too, of course, Guinea pigs need clean drinking water every day, and their water bottle often needs washing because they like blowing pieces of food back up the spout. One especially nice thing about guinea pigs is that if you handle them regularly and carry them around, stroke them, 
talk to them and make a fuss over them, they become really fond of you. The correct way to pick up a guinea pig is with one hand over its shoulders and the other supporting its bottom. Another nice thing about guinea pigs is that they talk a lot. When they want food or water, they often give a sort of a whistle, sometimes low, sometimes loud. Boars say chutter when they start squaring up for a fight. So do sows when their babies pester them too much. Other things guinea pigs say are put, chut, tweet, and durr. But when one guinea pig says purr to another guinea pig, it's as plain as the nose on your face that it only means one thing. I love you. And that brings me to what's best of all about having guinea pigs, baby ones, because their ancestors, the wild cavies of South America, lived out in the open with enemies all around them. Their young ones had to be ready to run for it. So the guinea pig sow carries her unborn litter for a very long time, about 70 days and they arrive in the world fully furred, with their eyes open, and their mouths ready, already filled with teeth. Newborn guinea pigs are such a comical sight. Their heads and feet look too big for their bodies. Baby rabbits are born blind and naked and helpless, but not baby guinea pigs. But almost immediately, they show an interest in those two favorite guinea pig pursuits, eating, and conversation. Of all the guinea pigs I've had, there were two that I will never forget. Both were Abyssinians. Both were boars. And each in his time fathered dozens of lovely, big-headed, big-footed babies. One was a bright golden color, and his name was King Arthur. The other was a blue roan named Beach Boy. Both are buried in my yard. There's a solitary apple tree at the edge of my lawn, and I like to look at it and think that under it, Beach Boy and King Arthur lie peacefully, one on one side of the tree, one on the other. I'm not sad about this, just happy to remember what a lot of pleasure I've had from all my guinea pigs. One especially nice thing about guinea pigs is that if you make a fuss over them, they become really fond of you.